On today's Church TechCast screencast show, Managing Your Library in ProPresenter 5. The Church TechCast screencast show, along with other Church TechCast shows, are generously provided for by viewers like you. Head on over to patreon.com slash paulallencliff, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-a-u-l-a-l-a-n-c-l-i-f to make this and other fine shows available. Thanks again for your support. Okay, so I got an email. Let me see if I can't bring that up here from a guy that I've been talking about uh, back and forth from time to time all about uh, importing and exporting and just managing the library in ProPresenter 5. His name is Luther, and let's see if I can't find this email, because I got it this weekend, and I thought, perfect opportunity to talk about this uh, for the show. Here we go. Okay. Um, Can you direct me to a video to accomplish the following? I have copied my Pro 5 library to a desktop folder on an iMac running ProPresenter 4. How do I import from 5 to 4? Luther. Okay, so let me show you just a couple of things that you need to know to do this, and I want to show you just a couple other things that might help you here. So let's go ahead and transition over to my screen here. Uh, You'll notice this is an uh, older background here. Let me switch to the only song in the library right now. That is A Mighty Fortress. So this was, remember in a previous show we dealt with this. So here we have uh, A Mighty Fortress is Our God and I could put a background on it and stuff like that. Come on, Beach Ball of Death, don't cause problems for me. So, yep, I can put a background on it. I can do whatever I need to. Well, let's say that I need to get this into ProPresenter 4. The easiest way to do what Luther is asking is to go up to the file menu, which is directly above my mouse right here, File, and click on that. And now you'll see all the options. There is an export as Pro 4. So you can do that, and then once you do that, you export the entire playlist of all the songs you need, and then import them into ProPresenter 4. So that's no problem. Now, I'm not totally sure why you'd want to do this, because I actually think ProPresenter 5 is better. And as long as you're only using one at a time, it's perfectly okay to have ProPresenter installed on multiple computers and only use it one at a time. But it could be the case that he doesn't have a site license, which... I recommend the site license if you're going to do it uh, for more than one computer. But let's say he doesn't have the site license. He had a license for 4. He got a license for 5. And 4 is now, I don't know, maybe the youth are using it, for example. And he needs songs from the big room, from the sanctuary, to go to the youth room. So let's say that that's why he's doing that. Makes sense. Let's say they're happening at the exact same time, so he can't use them concurrently. So you could do exactly what I showed you here. But one of the changes between ProPresenter 3 and ProPresenter 4 was ProPresenter 3 was database-based. So there was a database on your computer that had all the songs in it, and it was difficult to get to, difficult to edit, just made it hard. But let me show you what how ProPresenter 4 and 5, I believe ProPresenter 4 does this too, how they both uh, deal with it, is you'll notice that I have a ProPresenter folder, ProPresenter 5 folder, here, 
and uh, let me actually make that just a little smaller so that you can see the uh, path to that. So that's, again, this is on a Macintosh, might be slightly different on a PC. It's the hard drive, then the user's folder, then the current user, my current username is Paul, then documents, and then ProPresenter 5. I believe that's the default. Uh, in ProPresenter 4, I think they made a renewed vision folder, and then inside that was your song folder. But this, I believe, it, I think that I just installed this default. So that's where we are here. Now, let's say that I've got two. Uh, let's say that I've got two computers that have. ProPresenter 5 on them, I've got a site license, or I'm using them at different times, so that's not a problem. Or maybe I've got a license for each campus, and I just need to have those to be the same between. Uh, what you can do is, let's say I've got this song backup folder over here, so let me drag that over here where you can see it. And so I've got all these songs that need to go into the song backup folder. So what I'm going to do is I could uh, just copy and paste them into there. And then when I restart ProPresenter, they're all going to be there. Or I can go back over here in ProPresenter and go import or file, then import import file. By the way, if I wanted to do it the other direction, I can import from ProPresenter 4 or ProPresenter 3. Just export them from ProPresenter 4 or ProPresenter 3 and do that. But what I need to do right here is import file. So I'm going to click import file. And I believe I put that folder on the desktop. So let's Give it just a second here, and I'm going to go to desktop. And this could be a thumb drive. In fact, these files are all measured in kilobytes. So it might be worth having a couple of thumb drives floating around with all your presentations on them, just as a backup. Because you never know when you're going to be uh, out and about when you're going to be out and about and uh, you're on a computer that doesn't have ProPresenter and all of a sudden they decide they need it and you also need you also need to import all your songs and since they're all so small it's no big deal so let's see here song backup so let me do that so I'm just gonna let's select just a sh small range here and I'm going to click open import all these songs into the song library okay so we can go back over here and you'll see that they've all been imported into the song library so now I, I can get to 10,000 reasons I can get to all I Want for Christmas, which we sang, strangely enough, during the Christmas series, uh, etc. Um, and so that is some important stuff that, uh, that you can get in there. Now, let's instead show you how you would import an entire library, because this is kind of cool and useful. So if you had a big library, you know, that's fine for four or five songs, but it can kind of gack up per presenter sometimes when you've got a lot more. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quit ProPresenter on the Mac. That's Command Q, and it's going to ask me if I am sure. That's because you could have multiple programs running at the same time, and you could be inadvertently quitting ProPresenter. So that's why that's there because they don't want you to inadvertently quit it. So, here we go. Here are the rest of the songs in the song uh, backup. So, I am going to just drag those all in. 
and you'll see because I have some of them I imported already so I'm just gonna I could click click skip let's actually do that I'm gonna click apply to all and skip so that's what you would do if some of them overlap if you know that you've got the latest version you're gonna want to overwrite that but whatever so there we go we've got this entire library and let me minimize that here and so we've got the entire library this is what was there before this is the new stuff okay so anything after angels we have heard on high is new so it's all atlas church clap closer etc so what we'll do now is we will go to open up ProPresenter 5. Now you can't see the icon bouncing, but we will get that going here in just a second. Let's let that start up. Okay. Sorry if you're hearing my square, my square. <laughs> it's what happens when you combine uh, chair and squeak. If you hear my chair squeak, sorry about that. I'm trying to figure out where it's having trouble. But okay, uh, you might have also heard my dog uh, whining a little in the background. I'm going to take her out immediately after this show. But anyway... So that's starting up here. And remember, we're looking for everything after angels we have heard on high. So what it's actually doing right now is it's scanning this folder to make sure that uh, it sees everything that's in there and adds it to the library. So the first song should be Atlas followed by Church Clap, okay? So, and you'll notice how small those uh, files were, like measured in kilobytes. So you could have hundreds of those bad boys on a thumb drive with no problem whatsoever. Okay, so if we go down, Angels We Have Heard, Angels We Have Heard on High was the last song we had, and now there's Atlas... Uh, there's Church Clap, Closer, another version of Closer, etc. So you can see how you can manage this library really easily. Now what I do is every week our church has um, a satellite campus, and let's say they have a playlist. Here, let me scoot this up so you can see it. Okay, they have a playlist with all these songs in it let's say for example what I do is I instead of just giving them the new songs I make a playlist with all the songs in it and I export playlist so the difference between these exports are if you want it for ProPresenter 4 you export as Pro 4 that's what Luther was asking if you want to export a playlist, which is what I'm about to do, that will get everything in the playlist here. In this case, it's the sample playlist down there. If you want to um, get everything on there, including videos, etc., then you export as a Pro 5 bundle. If you just want the text, the straight text, you export it as plain text. So, what I'm going to do is export playlist and then I can give it a name. Let's put it in the song backup folder. Let's say I want to um, give it today's date. Let's see, it's the 6th of May 2014 and I do year first so that on the computer they will be organized chronologically if you do month and day first it will be organized 
by month and day despite the year. So I always do year first so that all from the same year um, goes together. So I'm going to put that in song backup and export that. Okay, now when I get to my satellite campus, I can just go File, Import, File. And so a good use of this is if you wanted everything from a specific Sunday, or maybe you wanted to create a playlist with all the songs from a specific season and only have these from, you know, every month make one with changes. You could absolutely do that. So then when I click open, it's going to say, hey, we've got, um, again, this gives me that uh, same dialogue. I can, if I'm uncertain, I can add a new version. If I'm certain that the this new one is the newest one, I can do that. Before I did skip, so that it ignored the ones that existed already, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Apply to All, and I'm going to add a new version. And for some reason that didn't quite translate, so I'm going to click Add a New Version again. So that brings that in, and now I have a new sample playlist down here that has um, all these songs in it. So that should solve that problem, and it should make it pretty easy for you to deal with just all the library issues that you could have with ProPresenter. Hope that helps you, and I hope that it's something that will just increase your ability to do a few things that make it easier for you to use this software as you're in church going out and changing eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.